What's going on guys? Bonafide Hustler here, and in this video I'm gonna discuss with you guys seven items that sell for around 100 bucks or more on eBay. So, anyways, I'm the Bonafide Hustler. I reside in Austin, Texas. I flip stuff part-time. I find from garage sales, estate sales, flea markets, pawn shops, swap meets, big box stores, and I put it on places like eBay, Amazon, my antique booth, and consignment stores in town. So, all right, um, I do wanna make sure my audio is good because I'm trying the audio through the camera today, which is this uh, external camera. So if I do sound good and kind of loud and clear, then let me know. It's the same camera we use in my garage for some of these other videos, but I want to make sure that it sounds good. All right. So um, yeah, these items that we're going to be talking about, I do have firsthand experience flipping them minimum once. All right. Um, so between my brother and I, some of these are going to be two times, three times, a couple, four times. And then there's one that we've flipped um, somewhere between five and 10 times on eBay, whereas we send most of them to FBA current day. But anyway, on eBay, there's still a great market for it, and I think you definitely need to pay attention. So um, I did say that these items sell for around, so of course markets fluctuate, you know, and some of these markets are, um, some of them are pretty thick, and then some are pretty thin, but it's more or less a show, you know, to highlight some things. So we're, when you're going out at garage sales or you're going to thrift stores, you can remember these things, do some uh, on-spot research on your own. Um, all I wanted to do is really pique your interest so that way you remember it and uh, hopefully you can make some money on my behalf. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get right to it. I do wanna make sure that I say hello to some people that are in the feed. We have Trip Little in the feed, Zaheer. What's up, Zaheer, all the way from, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a daytime live show, which must mean, he's this guy's in the UK, so it must mean that it's like nighttime for him. Uh, Rhonda's in the house, Alan's in the house. We have Brandon English, Garage Flips. What's up, Garage Flips? Good to see you again. Um, and then we have Vincent Grisanti and Jillian. So about 46 viewers came in really quickly. So thanks a lot for tuning in. So um, one disclaimer, okay, is that these items are gonna be a little bit harder to find um, as opposed to some of my 10 items that sold well on eBay videos and things like that. So if you're looking at this and you're like, I'm not finding it this weekend and I haven't found it in a month or two, just remember it takes a while, okay? It does take a while to find these items, but you know, they're not really long tail. As soon as you have it, it's pretty much a guaranteed hundred bucks or more uh, for the most part, okay? And what's up to the thrift in the heart of Texas, Carol's Gift Shop, Lisa R, Cody O, Pamela, Chaz, and Venus. Okay, so let me get the screen share going. And we're gonna look right at the first item here. Let me present this to everyone. Now I've sold two of these in the past probably year and a half. Um, so hopefully you can see the screen. Um, this is a eBay screen share essentially. And I just wanna make sure that you guys can see the mouse going around. All right, if you guys can see the mouse going around, I think we are ready to go. Let me make 100% sure. I'll just assume that we are ready to go. All right, so what we have here are reissued decks from two two companies that I think you really need to know about, okay? So one of the reissued decks, and when I say a reissued deck, it's almost like a commemorative kind of addition to early 80s or even early 90s skateboarding culture slash, slash skateboarding art, okay? So we have, and a lot of these are gonna be signature boards from the writers that use them, but they're gonna be reissues. And the artwork can be done sometimes by that person or from other people that were just really good artists in the skating culture back in the day. So when we look at reissues, a lot of times the reissues that I have sold, uh, I've sold two in the past year and a half. I have a third in my garage that I actually still skate with. Um, but yeah, um, when you look at the reissues, you definitely want to look at Santa Cruz and World Industries because these two companies uh, made really decent reissue boards that are almost identical to the real thing, um, except they're just reissues. And the Santa Cruz boards are going to say reissues on them. In fact, here's a, a Roscop that we have here. I've sold a light blue of this model um, for right around this price. Um, so we can take a look at this one real quick. And... Um, you know, the artwork is really cool. In fact, the light blue one is kind of like right here. So, um, you know, if you just want the uh, Roscop deck re reissue, just the deck itself brand new, it's a hundred and, you know, looks like $165 shipped to your door. So just the deck of the skateboard, I mean, that's pretty, pretty good money right there. I was uh, I was fortunate to find one of these, and this is in a ride along also about a year and a half ago, 
where uh, I bought some surfboards and I bought some skateboards and this was one of them. Um, I think I only spent around 40 bucks at that garage sale, but we can take a look uh, at this deck. This is the white version of the deck, which, um, you know, they make a green one, a white one. Um, but yeah, so right here we have Roscop designs. And then if you look closely, a lot of times the Santa Cruz will say reissue somewhere on the deck. Um, it usually will say reissue on most of them. So I know on mine it said reissue and maybe this is just another year but you definitely when you're dealing with a santa cruz one a lot of times they're going to say reissue you'd be really hard it'd be very hard to find a true true original but if you do find a true original we can go back and we can see what a true original roscop would sell for and look this is a vintage uh you know roscop this is not a reissue and you can kind of see the market price versus uh, a reissue board all right so Depending on whether something is um, Santa Cruz, like this is an Alba or maybe uh, yeah, an Alba board, this one right here, Ross, Roscop, we have some Grossos, we have more uh, what looks to be other artwork that you know is licensed to Santa Cruz, um, and we have the Jason Jesse one, the Vallely, we have some Hosoi ones, this one I think is, this one is the, definitely one of the more common ones you might find out there, the Hasoi. In fact, some of my friends have skated this type of board or this board exactly in a reissue form. And it's like you're, you're skating around on a hundred and, you know, $30 skateboard. Even skated on, you can, you know, sell it for about that much. But this is probably one of the more common ones you might see out there. I've seen a couple of friends find these before and uh, that's pretty interesting. And then we have the World Industries ones, which are 130 bucks or so. But remember when it comes down to skateboard decks, I mean, the more intricate the artwork, here's another Roscop right here, the Roscop face. So, you know, when they say Roscop face, that's probably the keywords to look at these decks like that. And then there's another face one of, up here. Here's a face one right here. I'm surprised this guy didn't put face in his actual keywords. Um, but yeah, these are very, very well-known ones. So I had one of these. I also think I had a my other Santa Cruz one that sold was an orange one. It was almost like a rat fink type artwork on the back of it. It was awesome. And funny story is I actually bought it to skate brand new. I built it brand new with indie trucks and everything for about 220 bucks. And it ended up selling for like 190 like uh, two years later. Like I barely skated on it. So it held its value considerably and it still had an incredible market. But I did pick a very, very interesting color and i did pick really good artwork so anyway um wow someone said that they oh, okay okay i thought you, okay never mind so someone said that they saw a mike mcgill and a skull and dagger used yesterday cool so yeah when it comes down to skate culture i mean there's a really really big um following for it whether it be the t-shirts uh the skateboards um about a year and a half ago when i was with college picker i found an actual bones brigade type shirt, not type shirt, a Bronze Brigade shirt at a garage sale for like five bucks. And I sold it for like $170, completely shrunken and faded and everything. But, you know, old skateboard culture type things, um, if it's the real deal and it's not a reissue, like if it's the real deal, you're talking big, pretty big money, right? If it's a reissue, then I would definitely say start looking at these two brands, Santa Cruz and World Industries for, um, you know, hints. And uh, at least it'll perk your uh you know your mind up to go okay let me whip out the phone and type this in santa cruz reissue sold and if you see the the you know the amazing artwork of the board that's in front of you at the thrift store or the garage sale and you see it on ebay it might be worth picking up for you know ten dollars or less whatever you end up paying for it so um yeah anyways that's one of the items i wanted to show to you um a little bit harder to find for sure uh, but definitely one of the items i wanted to show because um I, I, I sometimes find vintage skateboard stuff and it sells for, you know, uh, and it's not really super high grade vintage stuff. We're not talking um, that anything associated with Tony Hawk or uh, Peralta this or that. And some of these old school skateboards still sell for like 50 to like 80 bucks in pretty torn up condition. But when you start dealing with um, really interesting brands like uh, Vision and Santa Cruz and you have Alva boards and whatever that are true, true vintage boards. I mean, there's really big money in all, all that kind of stuff, really big money in that stuff. So someone's saying uh, Sector 9 does well. Sector 9 is good for a local flip. Sector 9 is a longboarding company that probably came about, I don't know, I'm going to speculate to say about 15 years ago. Um, I got my first Sector 9 board about probably 10 years ago and it was a downhill board. It was amazing. But uh, you know, it's been around for, I would say, about 15 years. Comfortably, I would say about 15. Uh, Sector 9 is predominantly a longboarding company, and I would do local flips on Sector 9 boards only for the most part. 
Um, yeah. So, and if you're going to deal with uh, skateboards on eBay that are current day and that are longboards, I mean, one of the best brands to look for is called Loaded. In fact, we'll just get a little bonus going on right here. Loaded uh, longboards. Here's your little bonus. So, you know, Loaded boards, not the boosted ones. So, like, Boosted has a contract with Loaded to use their boards as their decks, but we're not talking about these electric skateboards like um, Casey Neistat uses, but... Uh, yeah, we're going to go to used, highest first, and sold listings. And you can kind of see that loaded, whether you have a chubby unicorn, they have at least 12 decks now. So we have an Icarus. There's a Dervish. Here's a Dervish right here. Asama is real good. We have the Bangra, which is amazing. This is a longer, longer type dancing type board. But if you find loaded things in your hometown that are, you know, sub 80 bucks and they have, let's say, orangutan wheels um, and pretty decent trucks, maybe Paris, or um, something like that, then it might be worth finding a long box and throwing it on eBay because we can see that the Bangra is on here. It's a very popular board they have. Tesseract is a little bit shorter board, more freestyle oriented. The Vanguard, my brother has one of these. Um, these, I don't like these boards very much, but they're still a decent following for them. They're a little too springy for me. Uh, my favorite's the Dervish. And um, yeah, but I'm just showing you basically, here's a, you know, look at these Bangra, what they're selling for. Here's a Bangra right here, tw basically 230 bucks, 230 bucks. These are used Bangra longboards. Um, this is my favorite one that they make, the Loaded Dervish. Um, yeah, and there's even some rare ones that they don't make anymore, like this one right here, the Ceviche. It's a 33-inch one that was predominantly made for like bowl skating and pumping and stuff. It just didn't do very well, but you can see that it has pretty decent decent cult following. If you can still find a loaded ceviche and you can throw it on eBay for about 200 bucks. Um, but yeah, I would say I know my loaded long boards pretty well. I've, I've skated these boards for, um, I don't know, looks like probably eight years or so. But yeah, and here's one that I recently bought like a year ago, a poke, poke. Um, this was not cheap. To build it out was like 270 bucks, but it looks like I could still sell it for about 180. So that's not that bad. But yeah, a loaded poke is pretty cool. Um, all right, so there's your little bonus type thing of something that sells for more than 100 bucks used. That's another one right there. I have sold two or three dervishes on, e on eBay before, and like I said, dervish is their, probably the most signature board of all time is called a loaded dervish. So we can take a look at what dervishes are selling for. And this is just one of the most versatile board that, boards that they've ever made. Um, they pretty much just redo the artwork every year. They don't redo anything else. Like the artwork is basically the only thing that changes. So if you ever find one of these boards, flip it over and see the artwork and compare it to other artworks that you see on uh, eBay. But for the most part, just loaded dervish longboard. You're going to have to basically put what the flex is and it'll say it right here in this little number. It's a little black number. Um, and the flex determines how bouncy the board is and what the weight of the individual that could be riding the board essentially. So yeah, there's always that number right about there on the board. You can you can barely see it, but it's right there. Okay, so yeah, even a loaded bamboo. This is a 42, like completely banged up. Look at this, 22 bids at that. Um, and yeah, just anyway. I think the, board, the loaded one that I have right now is this one with this design. So depending on the design, you can kind of tell the year. But like I said, the actual year is kind of irrelevant because they keep the same exact board. The artwork is the only thing that changes. And sometimes the grip tape on these Sama ones are the difference between a Dervish and a Dervish Sama. All right, so there we go. Uh, let me see, let's get to the next item real quick here. This one's really interesting. So hopefully, um, and let me read some actual uh, comments here. Um, Hopefully the screen share is going well. I'm just, I get so caught up with, uh, you know, showing you guys the stuff that I don't check back in the feed. So if I'm doing something wrong or this, the sound is not right, then let me know. Yeah. Um, here we go. Here's a, here's a great comment. So whiskey picker, I, I, I sold an old Powell Peralta board that was a new condition. Holy crap. For 500 bucks, I paid $10 for it. Yeah, so there's definitely big money to be made in skateboarding culture, especially vintage skateboarding culture. But if you're going to get away from vintage skateboarding culture, I mean, some of the better, more solid flips, if you're going to be messing with eBay, would be some of these loaded boards. Loaded long boards are always made of bamboo, I think, for the most part. Yeah, there should be all bamboo made. Um, they are called loaded because you can load the board with force 
and it actually springs you out of, let's say, a turn or whatever, or a trick. But if you load the board, the bamboo is such a resilient material that it actually springs you back and gives more energy out. And so they call it loaded for that reason. Um, okay. So uh, here's Motivation Ebook Smith. Hey, Chris, have you ever found a vintage earth ski? I have not. Rhino LA says, what's up, Bonafide? Hey, what's going on? And um, so Lucky is saying, smash that like button. You know, one of the easiest plays, thank you so much, guys, by the way, is, uh, you know, a play I used to do a couple years ago. You know, there's just not enough, enough, there's not enough time in the day. Let me get back to the actual video here. There's not enough time in the day, guys, to do everything right. There just isn't. So, um, so one of my plays back in the day, I would say about, about about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, was to search Craigslist, Craigslist religiously for um, loaded longboards, right, especially dervishes. So, um, and it was just for a, Craigslist to Craigslist type flip, like I would buy it. And a lot of times they came with extra things, you know, sometimes uh, skate pads, helmet, uh, other wheels, and this and that. It was a way for me to fi almost finance my longboarding hobby without spending any money for it. So basically, I'd buy these boards and then I would put, uh, I would take the amazing wheels off, or I would take wheels that came with it and I would just put on my other boards. And all my boards have amazing wheels on them now, but those all came from flips back in the day. So I would put, semi-amazing wheels back on the boards and I would put them back on eBay and I'd put them back on Craigslist and I would flip them. A lot of times what I noticed in this town is that they came from students, all right? So you find a student that's trying to get, you know, rent money or they're leaving town and they're trying to sell their bike and their skateboard and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of times that's what it came down to because I found out that, you know, out of all the trips I made into town to pick up these longboards, and that's one of those things when a longboard's real cheap in Austin, Texas, and it happens to be a loaded longboard, I mean, you kind of have to just drop everything and just go and get it, right? If you, especially if you're looking for that $100 flip or, you know, maybe $70 flip on eBay because once the shipping processes, is, processes and the fee goes through and all that, you know, you probably end up with like 60, 70 bucks. But if you flip it on Craigslist, you know, you give it about two week downtime. Um, yeah, you can usually make about a solid 100 bucks. So I would try to find loaded dervishes, especially. That was my favorite board to look for. Uh, load, loaded dervishes for anything really less than a hundred bucks, you know, in really good condition. Because a lot of times these students just get it because it's like the cool thing to have, but then they only skate it a couple times. Maybe they bust their ass, and then it just sits there on their wall. So I have found I have found so many mint boards close to the campus in my hometown, and it's quite fun because you just take the really good wheels off. I put it on my stuff, and then I put some semi okay wheels back on the board reflip it and it's you know good to go. You can get a pretty decently built loaded dervish brand new for about 330 bucks from the site. Um, but yeah, you know, it's one of those, I don't think many, a lot of people in, in town just see loaded dervish, like that's the good board, I know exactly what that is, I'll just go buy new wheels for it, and that's how the transaction is made. So hopefully you can make money on eBay or Craigslist using that tactic right there. Okay, I, I get excited, I get excited talking about this stuff. Let's go back into the, uh, screen share and let's get you guys back in here and let's get the learning started all over again. Uh, Corinne says, bamboo boards are awesome. I have a few. I have a few too and I love bamboo boards, I am telling you. Uh, my favorite boards now, my favorite longboard of this time, I would venture to say maybe of all time now at this point, is hand boards. Um, they were actually on Shark Tank, but that has nothing to do with it. They've been around you know, five or 10 years before Shark Tank and they were there's a small company and then Shark Tank blew them up. I decided after the Shark Tank episode to really, you know, kind of get into one and man, they are the best boards ever. So I like them a lot. Okay, let's go into the next item that can sell for a hundred or more on eBay. Guys, really pay attention to this because between my brother and I in, a, in the past year, we have found two of these, okay? So White Mountain Ice Cream Makers are interesting. These are the ones that you have to use with rock salt and you make your own ice cream, you know, it's just kind of a thing to have when you got a bunch of friends over. And I've done, I've made ice cream once before, and it was really, really good. But the time it takes to make it is really not worth it. So White Mountain, ah, there's my brother calling me. Sorry, guys. Um, White Mountain happens to be a uh, brand of ice cream maker that, um, you know, you can find at garage sales, and you can also find it at thrift stores, although uh, we, the ones we have thrift stores that we have seen have just been really incomplete, so we don't mess with them. But uh, the ones that we found at garage sales, um, definitely, sorry, I'm texting my brother real quick. Um, the ones that we found at the garage sales have been dirt cheap. One I found with Max from the green room, and the other one I found with Emer my, my brother, E-Money. 
And uh, yeah, one was found at the tail end of the day around 10.30, and the other one was found around 9 o'clock in the morning. Both were found on Saturdays, and um, one was 10, and the other one I want to say was 5. But either way, the one that was 10 sold for like 170. The one that was 5 sold for like 169. No, I guess both sold for 170 at that point. So let's talk about what they look like. What, what are you looking for? Does it matter if you have the hand crank or the electrical thing? I mean, one had the hand crank and one didn't. So I can't say that it made a huge difference. So here are the old ones. They have hand cranks that go into little gear reduction kind of deals. And then they spin the actual... Um, aluminum, what seems to be metal or aluminum kind of cylinder that's inside and then the rock salt is on the outside of the cylinder. You put all the ingredients in the inside of the cylinder and um, it makes it cold really quickly and so you can make ice cream fast. Now, some come with a plug, right, and they have an auto thing so you don't have to actually crank. Um, but here's the crank ones. You can see the crank right there. It's really easy to understand. These things are literally bulletproof. Um, the White Mountain logo might be in green, it might be in this color, you might have a green tub, a white tub, or a maple looking tub like this, or a bucket should I say, um, but some have the electrical things on top. But you can see that this market, I mean, look at this, right? So we're at highest shipping first, used, and sold. And I think a lot of people that sell these have probably messed with it for just a couple times, and it's kind of like maybe break it out during the a certain season or maybe for Easter or who knows, right? But it's just not used that much, right? I mean, most people are probably just gonna go down the street and go to a supermarket and buy some ice cream. But we can see that this market, you know, with five mouse flicks is still like already at 150 bucks. Like I said, some will come in green, some will come in this wood maple looking thing, and then some are coming in white. And uh, yeah, some might have hand cranks and some might have the electrical thing. And that's essentially what you're looking for. So. When we found one at Savers or something, uh, we didn't buy it, but it was just like the tub, and we're like, forget it. We don't want the rest of that. But you're looking for the top. You're looking for the actual metal cylinder, right, and then the bucket. So three things you really want to be having, um, the top, whether it's hand crank, metal cylinder, bucket, um, always a bonus if you get White Mountain. I know there's another brand out there that makes these things, and we just don't mess with it. We just like White Mountain because we have a bit of experience already with it. But definitely a bolo. I want to make sure that you guys know this. We're already like, you know, seven mouse scrolls down and we're still here at about a hundred bucks. So definitely something to know about. <laughs> Swamp Picker Glenn from the green room says, I have a green ice cream maker crank made out of wood. Yeah. So there you go. Um, so this is a great question. Pamela Blanchard says, is this the white, is the white mountain the brand that the only one that sells? You know, it's a really good question. Um, I know that we looked up another one that we had found in some other thrift store and it just wasn't worth the time and the hassle because look, these things are not small, all right? And shipping them is in a really, I mean, relatively large box. So um, yeah, I would definitely say uh, I like sticking with, you know, solid brands, right? It's the difference between um, hustling a really amazing brand leather jacket and then one that's like made from, let's say Wilson's, right? Which just has like a wishy-washy kind of market. Um, so it's kind of like the same play. This this brand, I mean, we can see that with all the mouse scrolls, we're, it's got a very alive and well market that is definitely right around 100 or more. Of course, some people with really crappy keywords might end up at the bottom, right? But with strong keywords, and I don't think the year truly even matters at this point. Just, you know, a really good picture, I think, is the most important thing that you can put in there. Because we're looking at, you know, solid pictures with non-distracting backgrounds, 137.25 total right there. And um, yeah, so non-distracting backgrounds. And this one right here decided to separate, um, you know, what was in the actual cylinder, the cylinder itself, and it shows everything. So just think about it like that. We've had good luck with the two that we have sold. All right, let's go to the next. Now, this one here is going to be interesting because this one I think is uh, definitely based upon um actually finding everything complete because i think that's exactly how i was able to sell one for about 120 not 100 about 100 it was a 119.99 this was about a year ago and then e-money sold one about six months ago for i believe 100 exactly so we're going to talk about that one thing and it is the nerf vulcan gun but more importantly finding it complete so let me get down to the hundred dollar level here uh yeah, so this is a pretty good one right here, except I already know that one's missing something. So 
Let's go to this one uh, right here. This one looks pretty complete. All right, so um, essentially what you want to be looking for is, you know, the Nerf, the Nerf, the Nerf Vulcan EBF25 is a battery operated kind of like Gatling gun type, nah, I wouldn't say Gatling gun, but it has a belt feed kind of thing. So maybe more like the equivalent of like a 50 caliber, like real, like awesome army gun. So like Nerf makes one. Um, and it's relatively heavy. It has a handle right here, so you can kind of carry it around. It has a cool tripod. Um, and then the end of this clip truly is supposed to go in this ammo box right here, which fits on the side of the gun. Um, but that's essentially how it came stock, right, was with all these things. Now, some people put some extra things in there like this. Uh, this one's putting a scope on top. But if we look at what the box really shows, someone actually sold it in the box here, used. We can see that, you know, essentially it's the belt, it's the gun, no uh, sight on top. If you look carefully, there's a tripod in this picture right here. And um, yeah, you're gonna wanna get it as complete as possible. So here's the complete way of doing it. If you can find two belts, a tripod, the ammo box, that's real important right there. And then on top of that, and it's not like everything's all fine and dandy, right? You still need to test the gun, which I believe takes four or five D cell batteries. And um, you gotta make sure that there's no um, corrosion and all that. So yeah, and then you're gonna have to test it with some darts. So yeah, you have to test that it works. And then you gotta put bullets, uh, little softy bullets in the here and then make sure that the belt, belt feeds okay, that the actual mechanism that throws the belt through from uh, left to right is working okay. So yeah, it takes a little bit of testing, right? But like I said, you know, some people are selling two for, uh, 120 bucks ish, but you can see that one, if you do it right, can get right around that hundred dollar mark or more. If you get the clear one, you're pretty lucky because this one's like super hard to find. But essentially, you know, we have a bunch that are right around the hundred dollar mark or more. And um, the last one that I ever sold was 119. The last one that uh, my brother sold was 100. So yeah, look for that. Um, if you find even the ammo chains, you know, in a bunch of a big pile, then yeah, you could probably sell the ammo chains for some good money too. But just don't don't forget about this kind of stuff because typically at a garage sale, the, the scenario here is you're dealing with a parent that just wants this stuff out, right? The kid has grown up, they don't play the nerf anymore. And the kid and the parents are willing to unload this stuff for dirt cheap. Um, the one that I sold for 120 bucks, I bought for five dollars at a garage sale, right? And that was on a Friday morning. Um, the one that eMoney found was like one or two dollars at a garage sale on a Saturday morning. So this stuff is out there, right? You just have to be able to look for it and make sure that you are you have enough knowledge to figure out what's complete and what's not. So we'll go over it real quick. You'll usually find the darts with them. Yes, you want to definitely get an, an, an at least one ammo belt. You got to have the tripod and get the ammo box. All right, and then go through all the testing stuff. But you can see right here that, you know, $74.99 with $50 of shipping, blah, 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 blah. It's an EBF 25, end strike, dart gun, ammo box, tripod, ammo belt, darts. All right. That's pretty much how you do it. Um, and yeah, I haven't, <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I haven't found one. I find them incomplete, you know, relatively often without any of this stuff. And if it's incomplete, then I'm going to buy it for about a dollar and I'm going to put it into a pile and eventually list it on Craigslist a couple months later with the keywords cosplay and um, steampunk as well. Because a lot of people that deal with cosplay and steampunk stuff love to dress up this gun because it's really probably the biggest Nerf gun that I've seen made. It's a pretty big gun. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's gigantic really for a kid. All right. So let's go to the next time. I'm going to see how many people we got. 108 viewers, guys. Um, I, I forget to ask, right? Um, but yeah, please hit the like button if you get a chance. I would greatly appreciate it. I, I like doing these shows. They're fun. Um, and after this, I'm going to go ahead to a coffee shop and mess with tax stuff, which sucks. So I got a lot of tax stuff ahead of me, and I'm not happy about it, but I got to take care of that stuff. But I wanted to make a cool show for you guys. Um, now, if you're wondering, you know, Outside of $100 selling items, are there other items that would sell for 50 bucks or 20 bucks or, you know, 70 bucks? Like, what are some bread and butter items that are not so rare that I can find? All right, so you can check this out. It's the first link down below, 100 Amazing Items to Resell. It's a guide that gets you on the email list of the Green Room University, which is basically my business, along with Rick and Profit and the College Picker. But that guide, more importantly, has 100 amazing items that are way more bread and butter and way more easy to find than the stuff that we're talking about today. And you can find that down below for free on a PDF, straight to your phone. Uh, look at the first link down below. All right. 
All right, so um, a lot of people in the feed. So let me ask you guys this. What is, hey, thanks, Joel. Like button was hit. Uh, we got Dwayne in the house. So let me ask you this. While we're on the subject of Nerf guns, what's the best Nerf gun you've ever sold? Like what's the highest Nerf gun you've ever sold? You know, outside of that, um, the stamp, not Stampede, but this Vulcan one, right? Outside of this Vulcan one, I did sell one on Amazon that was a clear, no, I want to say it was a, an, almost like a clear neon clear gun that was really odd but i did sell one of those on amazon for like 70 bucks one time um this was probably before nerf got restricted i think nerf is still i haven't sent anything to amazon in a long time that is nerf related it might it might be restricted i'm not 100 percent sure but i did sell this one gun where you press a button and like the gun twists to the side and then there's like a side clip that goes into it but i was just able to find the clear green gun itself no clip nothing else and it did test out okay. Um, but that one sold for about 70 bucks. And that was founded like in Goodwill for like four bucks. Anyway, um, yeah. So we have Brian Rappaport says, I found two Vulcans new in a box. I sold two last year for $400 each. And that's the gun that we're talking about right here on the program. All right. The Long Strike is really good too. That's almost like a secret um, eBay Nerf gun as well. The Long Strike is a harder gun to find intact. When I say intact, because you have to have the scope, sniper barrel, uh, I believe the long magazine. We can look at it right now. Let's look at the long strike, right? Let's get some bonus content in here for you guys to learn because it's called a CS6 sniper. Boom. Let's see if it comes up. Hold on real quick. Yeah. All right. Let me screen share this and let me get it to you guys. All right, so the CS6 Sniper, it's basically called Long Strike CS6. That's the actual model number is the CS6. So we can go into sold. We are in used and highest shipping first. And this is what you're looking for right here, okay? So <clears throat> this is an intact Nerf Strike with the bandolier darts, everything. So this is the way it truly came um, is with a strap to put your little Nerf bullets in. You got to have this gun exactly the way you see it right here there is a clip right back here that uh this is some, this clip that you can see in this picture let me make sure that this is all going to you guys present to everyone hold on let me go over that real quick i don't know if i was presenting to everyone okay so essentially what you're looking for is this nerf and strike cs6 is called the sniper rifle right it looks like a sniper rifle it has a scope all right and it has a sniper barrel attachment very important the sniper barrel attachment hard to find um, it has a bandolier, basically a, uh, you know, like a strap that holds the bullets. And it also has one clip, which can also go into the buttstock of the gun. And in this picture, you can see that the clip is in there right there, right? So that's what you got to get it to get that one complete. Um, see, you can see the clips in the back right here. This is the wrong uh, color of the, uh, the scope. Uh, essentially, the scope should be this color right here. And uh, yeah, here's a really kind of semi-complete one with an extra drum. Um, yeah, and some people make other different ones, um, you know, but this is essentially what it is. And I want to say it even had a tripod. There should be a folding. I think this one had a folding tripod too. Yeah, see, so here it is. Um, kind of hard to find with everything, but uh, you can kind of see right here that we are still on $129.99. This looks like this one person that's selling this sold it on February 2nd, February 3rd, January 28th, unless the person is getting a bunch of like, uh, you know, he's selling a bunch that are, that are not being paid for. This looks like, you know, this is a business model for some people, December 1st, December 2nd, December 5th, December 6th, December 11th, all for over a hundred dollars, you can see with shipping included. So definitely a nerf gun to look out for all right let's go to the next thing real quick you've heard me talk about this on videos so let's just talk about it real quickly and these are high eight sony camcorders honestly if you get them really complete you really should be sending these things to amazon fba but just know that on ebay there's a really really good um market for them as well i like to mess with the ones with the uh pop out screen and if you're lucky enough to find the more compact versions of the high eight then you're going to be doing pretty well so let me find a picture of the more compact versions. And of course, there's some little bit more advanced, but here's a compact version right here. So it's a little bit more, it's still a, di it's a digital eight. I could, I still, so there's high eight and there's digital eight. Um, high eight is gonna spit out at 420 lines of resolution. Um, I think digital eight is still the same uh, terminology, but if I'm not mistaken. So 
essentially there's, you know, the difference between some of these listings at the very bottom and the ones that are well over a hundred dollars or two things really. Um, well, three things. The first of which is it has to be tested and it has to be working. The second of which is it has to be complete and it has to have all the stuff that came with it originally. And then the last thing is, um, you know, if you use the right keywords like video transfer, all right, video transfer is very important as a keyword. Um, there's another keyword here. Let me see if I can find it where it shows, here we go, player recorder. That's an important one. See like camera recorder, player recorder, recorder, recorder. Um, but you see camcorder is obviously one of the big ones you want to use, but video transfer is going to be one of your key ones because a lot of people have media that's on high eight that they need to play back to let's say DVD recorders or something to where they can store it on a different medium. Um, so yeah, video transfer, video transfer, video transfer. This looks like this could be this person's business model, right? It looks like the same, a lot of the same pictures, same backgrounds, um, but we're dealing with different dates here. Um, so yeah, it could be a completely different business model for some people just to mess with these things. But if you do find the smaller ones with memory stick, like here, which is a TRV350, these are a little bit harder to find, but they are still high eight and they do have memory stick capabilities. And you can see what a tape looks like right there. That's what a high eight tape looks like. Um, you know, this is a really terrible picture. This is this really this is very surprising to me that it sells for this much, but I think the keywords are real strong here because video transfer is used. Uh, the model's there, Hi8, Video8, Camcorder, Sony, uh, Player, Camera, Video Transfer, 26 bids, all in the picture is <laughs> just the camera and the cord. That, I mean, that just blows my mind because a lot of times the ones at the top, as you can see, are ones that showcase what it really does come with usually, right? So there you go. Definitely something to look out for. We're not even in the 100R category and you can kind of see the market that I'm talking about. Um, and these are used and working ones too, right? Used, tested, working. Some even have the memory sticks with them. Here's some memory sticks that's even uh, unopened. It's kind of funny because memory sticks are like 64 megabytes. Like you look at it today and you're like, holy crap, like I can't believe how far technology has come. But that's essentially, you know, what it is. So. Here's a really complete one, right? It's got the manual, plus it has this like extra Sony offer of that time. Um, we have a lens adapter kind of key thing that goes on the lens, so you can adapt other type of fisheye type lenses to the camera. But yeah, and then we have a remote on this one too. So yeah, you know, you can still see above $100, well over 100 bucks. We have <coughs> um, 15 mouse scrolls, more mouse scrolls. We have, look at how big this market is. So. Definitely something to look uh, into, right? And definitely something to invest a little bit of time to test out when you find them. I have spent up to $25 in a garage sale for these kind of things. Uh, because when I buy in the garage sales, I just I just don't have the time to test anything out. So I just take a $25 swing because I know in broken condition, we're still talking, you know, somewhere between 50 and 80 bucks pretty quickly. So that's the play. I figure like if it breaks, if it's broken, it doesn't work cool, 50, 80 bucks. But if it's working, then I'm into this category and, you know, likely putting it on eBay or more likely going to Amazon. So anyway, yeah. So there we go. Uh, that's a good question. Carlos Delgado says, Is so, isn't Sony restricted on Amazon? Uh, it could be at this point. I haven't sent one in in, in at least three months. So, um, yeah, because actually the, the funny thing is the most current, like, two or three that I have found didn't work. So when they don't work, I definitely don't send them to Amazon. They go to uh, eBay. Okay. And... Brian Rappaport says, I can even sell them and even if not working for good money. That's right. So there you go. Um, all right, Hustle and Grow is in the house. We have 104 viewers, guys. Take a chance, take a, take a chance, take a second to uh, hit the like button, please. Um, okay, so let's go into the next item. We have a CC Filson bag. I found two in the past year and a half of this. This is a hard to find one, right? Um, I say that, but there also have been a couple that I've come across that are just high priced, like so I don't pop on them. So they're out there. It's just you might be lucky enough to find one um, for cheap. I want to say one was found at a garage sale and the other one was found at a state sale, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, one was very big. It was like a very large garment bag um, for like blazers and stuff. And the other one was a little bit more sensible type weekender bag. Uh, both sold for very good money, um, way over a hundred dollars. I mean, one was one sixty nine, the other one was three hundred and thirty, or something like that. Uh, the one that was three hundred thirty, I think I spent fifty. Here, I can look it up on the sheet that I have. Hold on, 
Actually, I won't do that because then everyone will see my sheet. Forget it. Um, so let's, yeah, one was 330, and I think that was the bigger one. It was in terror. It, you know, it had, I always describe this bag every now and then. Every, you might know the story, but it smelled like an airplane tarmac and had grease all over it, blah, blah, blah. Still sold for 330 bucks. That one was at a estate sale, I think, for $15. And then the other one was at a garage sale for 20 bucks, and it sold for like 170 if I'm not mistaken. So, the one at garage sale was a garage sale was more like this one, right? More like a bigger type messenger bag. Um, but we're looking at CC Filson sort by highest used sold listings. And um, yeah, if you're lucky to find some of these, I mean, she, these are super awesome. Like here's a duffel bag. Here's the weekender. So this is the one I pretty much found and I sold for 170 at a weekender, that color. Um, nice looking bag. And they can get really small. Here's a medium field bag, still really small, $150 selling right there. And um, yeah, so it's a nice market for, and I just put CC Filson bag. In fact, if I just put this together, maybe this would help. Maybe we'll get some different uh, things, maybe not. Um, but yeah, you know, it's one of those things that are a little bit rare because if you look at the new market, if you even go to the CC Filson store, I mean, you would be blown away at the prices of some of these bags, I mean, literally like blown away because they are expensive. Um, one of the easiest ways to tell if you have a Filson garment is, or a Filson bag is just to feel it. I mean, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be made out of really tough, tough canvas or rugged twill or however you wanna say it. Um, and it's gonna have leather um, accents, but they're gonna be extremely tough with bronze type um, buckles and stuff like that. And then it'll say CC Filson in a very, very small tab somewhere on the back. So let's see if we can find the CC Filson tab um, on this one, for example. It's a really small tab. I mean, it's, they, they don't blatantly show Filson anywhere in the bag, uh, but it should be a really small tab. I'll see if I can find one for you guys so you guys can see what to look for. If you don't know what to look for, I mean, it's kind of hard. So like that's the inside usually. Um, is you'll find that on the inside, which will be this one, a genuine Filson garment, whatever. Um, yeah, so there we go, genuine Filson, Seattle. But then some of the leather things on the outside will say Filson as well. I'm gonna see if I can find you guys one. Here's one, I think, yeah. So yeah, it should say CC Filson on some of these little leather, tiny little, little leather tabs that are inside or right on the outside of the bag. They're kind of hard to find, but uh, yeah. It's not everywhere on that bag. It's, this is not a very blatant, like, Filson or North. It's not like North Face or anything like that. You have to kind of have to look hard to make sure it's a Filson garment. All right, let's move on to the next item. This is a little, this is very broad, right? Because what to look for is, you know, essentially the style. So anytime you come across a leather jacket um, that is more rugged or it's very sleek and brown, like a lot of these can be sleek and brown, but a lot of them will be rugged and they'll look like something out of Mad Max films. Um, especially the Vanson ones like this. So if you find a Vanson or a Hain or um, even a Shot, right? Uh, C-H-O-T-T. -T. Here's some Shot ones right here. There are two distinct styles for these leather jackets, which we have to keep in mind that there's typically two things going on when you deal with cafe racer motorcycle jackets. And one is there's one side of it that has to look a little... There's one side that's like, okay, the cafe racer is a little bit more bad boy type jacket that... Um, has uh, a lot of weird padding on it, uh, sometimes a diagonal type zipper that's not directly in the front. Um, here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, you can see that the zipper here is not in the front of the, oh wow, uh, the zipper is not in the front of the jacket, it's almost to the side, see that? So that's one of the ways to kind of see it. And then you get these like weird, almost like Michael Jackson thriller type accents on the shoulders it's very bad boy looking you know when it has these buckles and zippers everywhere so yeah this could be considered cafe racer for sure and then the other thing to uh, consider is cafe racer that's a little bit more sleek you know maybe a little bit more hollywoodish uh, with your glitter helmet going from a bar to another bar maybe you've got a girl on the back of your bike and you know it's a little bit more sleek and more refined likely this person that's wearing this is going to be wearing a Maybe a you know a submarine or Rolex or something, but you got these uh, real sleek and uh, to the body type. Then these are not big and fluffy type jackets. These are very nice and um, I guess sleek is the only real word I can describe it. I mean they're they're fitted to they're fitted fitted to the body type jackets with hardly any padding whatsoever or weird accents, right? And that 
is definitely a cafe racer jacket as well, made by a very good brand, Schott's, S-C-H-O-T-T. So if we take a look at some of these other ones that are selling for good money, you could look at some Vansons and the Vanson ones got, you know, some Vanson patches, which is a big deal. Um, they're like little ovals. So they're there. This is more of the bad boy style with some pads, um, you know, and we have a center zipper here. One of the ones that I'd sold like about a year and a half ago was a Hangarik. It's a, it's kind of hard to say it, but I'll just type it in. Let's see, Jerry. On two of these, one sold locally and the other one sold on eBay for like one seven, one six, one fifty nine or something like that. And it had the sideward zipper, so we can take a look at this one. Mine was more like this with light gray looking kind. Of, it was a light gray one. Found at Salvation Army for like twelve dollars. And um, if we look at it, let's see a far away one. You can kind of see that the jet, the zipper is not center. It's not center right on the jacket. It's more like a a diagonal fold, and it's a really weird way of uh i thought it was so odd when i picked it up and it was really neat but it's called hangarik um or jerry however you want to say it there you go you can memorize that name and there you go so yeah so that's what they look like they don't, they're not all going to have that sideward zipper but here you know you can see another one and i just know that this brand for you know was one of those things when I researched it, I was like, damn, like almost a lot of them have this side zipper, right? And we have the buckle, very bad boyish looking and these weird accents that make it Cafe Racer. So Cafe Racer jackets just in general, have a look at them. If you can find a, a decent brand one, I think you're talking some really solid money, definitely over a hundred bucks. Going into the feed real quick, before we go to that last item, I wanna go into the feed and see what is going on. Nose Picker says, Filson feels like quality. Yeah, I've been to this. So CC Filson opened up a store here in Austin, Texas, in the, in the domain. And I went into it uh, not too long ago, maybe about a month ago. And it is an amazing store. It's completely, completely amazing, the garb that's in there. Because we have things that are like, what? I mean, you walk in there, and there's like an old Jeep in there. Um, everything is very... Seattle slash it looks like you just stepped out of a bush planet Alaska looking clothing it's really neat stuff so we're talking like wax cotton wax canvas a lot of like heavy duty type stuff uh, some stuff has fur collars um, hardly any of it had sheepskin inside it was just like basic brawny men type stuff with a women's section as well and the funny thing is I didn't buy anything while I was there but I was going there to try on something that I was gonna buy on eBay honestly um, because on eBay it was like half the price, but I tried it on and I realized man waxed canvas is really <laughs> it doesn't give very well and um, It's got a great look to it. It's so neat looking But when you put it on you feel like you're in a jacket that has been starched like 10 like a hundred times too many like a hundred times too much, right? And it just feels all crusty and weird and you're like you, you just don't get this articulation that you thought you would have got from the jacket. So anyway, I was going to buy it on eBay for like 170 bucks, but over there in the store, it was like 340 and I didn't buy it. But lo and behold, my wife bought a vest that was like $320 that had some little fur and it was really cool looking, but there's a lot of it. There's a lot of money in CC Filson. So I'll just say it like that. Um, a little bit harder to find uh, their garments out there. You'd have to look really carefully. Um, but a lot of times, if you want us to just start looking for the garments, they're going to deal a lot with grays, canvas-looking stuff, khaki colors um, with leather accents. And, um, yeah, those are pretty – and maybe a couple little black things, but that's about it. I mean, they'd stick with three primary colors. You're not going to find whites or reds um, unless it was like a flannel, right? There was a – there was a plaid flannel there that was like blue, and I think there was a red one. But for the most part, CC Filson deals with what I would consider pretty dull colors, right? And very versatile colors if you're going to wear something with it. Um, so <laughs> James Gonzalez says, wax cotton breaks in like leather. See, I know it does, but like it's just different. Like it's hard to say. Like leather, I've broken in leather jackets before and they feel amazing. But wax, I mean, wax cotton canvas. So the difference between wax cotton and the difference between wax canvas because canvas already is really really thick and if you i'm telling you if you if you saw the jacket that i was trying on i mean you'd be like it's already thick the way it is even with none of that weird starchy stuff or the wax stuff that they put on it the paraffin stuff it would still be extremely hard to articulate around but it's just different so anyway um all right <laughs> so let me get to the last uh 
item here, and then we'll be done with the show so I can mess with my tech stuff. I can't wait, right? Um, okay. So last item right here. All right. I think we're good. Hopefully you guys can see. Yeah. All right. Last item. I found one of these within a year ago, and then I found another one, not this brand, but a different one I want to show you too at a garage sale for 25 bucks, even with a tiny little micro stain, still sold for good money. Um, so let's look at the shot ones first. So remember that brand, those brands that we were talking about in the cafe racer type stuff, the shot bomber jackets are going to be definitely over a hundred bucks almost every single time. Even with some micro little rips or tears, I mean, you're going to be looking at something that is definitely over a hundred bucks. So the quick determination is uh, when you open up the jacket, you might have a really old type uh, shot tag that came from like a pilot type stuff or pi a pilot, like an ex-pilot. Um, and that old tag, if I can find one here, sorry, my dogs are barking. Um, I will show you if I can find the tag. It's kind of a hard tag to find. It's more like a U.S. military almost issued tag. Kind of looks something like this. Um, so, yeah, essentially this is what you're, this is one of the tags that, Actually, never mind. Maybe that's not the tag. Let me see if I can find the tag for you. So you're gonna have to determine a couple things. Like first of all, determine whether it's shot. It's gonna be pretty basic. Like it's gonna have very basic pockets and very basic, uh, you know, zipper. It's gonna feel really weird. It's gonna feel uh, very big and burly and hot. So um, a lot of times you have to determine whether you have real sheepskin or not. Um, otherwise, you have this other type material uh, that they use. This one has brown leather flight bomber jacket. This is not the sheepskin one, and that's more like faux fur. And the one with the sheepskin is going to look more identical to things that you've seen in Hollywood movies, such as such as Memphis Belle, and it looks like stuff like this. All right, so this is real sheepskin. Start dealing with real sheepskin. You shouldn't be really selling it in less than two hundred dollars. Um, the one that I had had sheepskin inside, but it didn't have this big lapel or collar type sheepskin. It was just a normal collar with sheep, sheepskin inside, so it was really interesting looking. And um, that one, I believe I sold for 179 I found it on a Goodwill rack for like $14, like a rack that had just been pulled out of Goodwill. The other jacket that I pulled out of um, uh, the garage sale, or a garage sale, was 25 bucks and was made by this brand called Cooper. So we'll look at Cooper real quick. We'll look at used and solds. All right, so Cooper used solds, and here we have um, horse hide leather bomber jackets and sometimes goat skin ones as well. I believe the one that I had was goat skin, but it had a tiny little blemish on it, so it sold for around 100. And it definitely was over 100. It was 100 plus. It was $25 that I paid for it at a garage sale and um, didn't have any patches or anything weird like that on there. It was a very sleek type jacket. I would say I would compare it to almost like this one. Um, so yeah, another brand to look out for. A little bit more ornate of a label when you deal with Cooper. Like Shot is a lot more uh, downplayed label. Like it's nothing exciting. You look at a Cooper label and it's just almost looks like Air Force type stuff. Like see right there. So you know, it kind of, kind of reminds me of um, Harley Davidson type things, but that's the Cooper label right there. So this is an A2. Looks like it's been deep patched. Um, yeah, and mine had a tiny little blemish close to the zipper and still sold for really good money. It was a goat skin one though. I do remember that much. And that pretty much concludes the show of seven items that will sell for around $100 or more and a couple bonus items that we did talk about. Um, I do want to take a second to tell you guys thank you so much for attending the show. Um, I want to read out a couple more comments here. Um, yeah, so here's what James Gonzalez says about the wax cotton or wax cotton is cotton slash canvas material impregnated with petroleum based wax as a rotter repellent. So yeah, um, I know that they sell the wax over there at CC Filson to put on the jackets. You do it every, they say like a year or so. Um, the wax cotton or wax canvas, when you articulate in it, like the jacket starts looking different. Like it almost looks faded with like lines and stuff, right? Um, but the wax cotton, like wax cotton jackets versus wax canvas jackets, what I find is that wax cotton is probably more everyday kind of wearing kind of thing. If you decide to wear, you want to wear that, it's more of an everyday, right? It bends real nice, and it's it's you know I just hustled one from a garage sale last weekend. Um, before that, one of the ones I sold was like seventy dollars or so that I picked up for five bucks on the side of a road garage sale on Lamar Boulevard here in Austin, Texas. It was made by Polo. And uh, that was definitely a wax cotton one as well, but 
you go into that C.C. Filson store and you get on a wax canvas jacket and it's just like two totally different things. Like one's more everyday and the other one's more like, all right, I'm about to go cut some wood. It's cold as crap outside. And uh, yeah, like it's just a totally different thing. So anyway, I hope you guys uh, like the video. We have a lot of people saying smack the like button. Um, Definitely hit the like button. Get the free guide, right? Very important for more bread and butter items that are probably going to sell for a little bit less than 100 bucks. Let's be fit. Let's face it and be honest with each other. But you can check this out first. Link down below 100 Amazing Items to Resell. The PDF digital download straight to your phone. Really, really good stuff. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, tried hard to get you the best information that I could. And uh, these are really important things to look for, especially when we come across this garage sale season now. I think it's going to be a great season. I think. Um, from this show, I'm pretty sure some of you guys or whoever starts watch, watches whoever watches this and remembers this stuff, I have a feeling the two most readily available to find items that we talked about today, one is probably that Nerf Vulcan gun. Like really keep your eye out for that one because that one is out there and that one, um, I'll see it repeatedly. I just won't see it as complete all the time. Keep your eyes open for that. Remember what you, it needs to be complete. The second thing to, uh, I think you guys will definitely be able to find sometime this season is the White Mountain Ice Cream Maker. So we discussed that. I think that was item number two or so. Um, that one right there, definitely look out for that one because we find ice cream makers in Goodwills and Salvation Armies. We don't find the White Mountain one, right? The White Mountain one intact with everything that's needed. We have found twice. My brother hustled one. Well, I gave it to him basically. Um, and then the second time was when I found it with Max from the green room. But anyway, so that's pretty much it. I think you guys are, you know, got enough information right here to, uh, you know, have some fun, make some money, and uh, hopefully you'll hit the like button. And uh, I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustler show. I got to mess with my taxes. This sucks. But uh, it was good to hang out with you guys. Thanks for keeping the comment feed, like, really good and positive. And thanks for the amazing questions and the amazing insight as well. All right. That's pretty much it. I'm out of here, guys. Take it easy.